Hello and a warm welcome to Namaste Tokyo. Another episode. And what's in store? Let's quickly slip into the first segment. India in Tokyo. India in Tokyo. Every time the Olympics come, comes along and we look at the um, expectations, we look at uh, the chances of winning a medal, there's one game that one event, one discipline that comes up every now and then, in invariably every single edition, that's Indian hockey. Sadly, we haven't had a podium finish in over four decades. The last time we won a medal was gold in 1980 Moscow edition. It's been a long wait. The lowest point of Indian hockey in Olympics was in 2008 Beijing when we failed to qualify. Subsequently in 2012 we did qualify but finished last. Can the Indian team turn around the fortunes and, and bring in a lot of happiness to the Indian hockey fans? The team has the potential. It's a nice mix of youth and experience. We have experienced players in Rubindra Pal Singh, Captain Manpreet Singh and the safe custodian of the Indian goal that is Sri Jesh. But many people say that the forward line lacks a bit of experience but they do have the talent and the skills in totality. It's a matter of holding the nerve. India is in a tough group. Group A has the holders Argentina. They also have the ever so strong Australia. They have the host Japan, New Zealand and Spain as well. If they can get off to a good start, Manpreet's dream was to, to be a flag bearer at the opening ceremony. Now his dream has come true. He is going to be the flag bearer along with Mericom. But can his greater dream of winning a medal come true? We're going to wait and watch. Not to forget the women's team which has qualified this time. A humongous achievement uh, for them. Um, expecting a medal? I'm not too sure. But let's hope that they put up a good fight under the captaincy of Rani Rampal. Let's wish the Indian men and women on the hockey field in Tokyo all the very best. Now, meet the champion. Who are we going to meet? There's somebody who is very special. He combined hockey and management and not just hockey. He combined management with the entire Indian sporting environment and has been responsible for producing four medals at the Olympics. And before that, he has been an Olympian himself and the former captain of the Indian hockey team. Let's go across and meet this champion. Joining me today on Namaste Tokyo is somebody who's a very special guest. Someone who quit his sport at the age of 28 when everybody thought that four to six years of sport left in him at the highest level. Well, he has a unique combo. He's a management expert, but before that, he's been an Olympian. He captained his country, and he is none other than Viren Raskina. Viren, what a pleasure having you on Namaste Tokyo. Warm welcome. Thank you, Sridhar. It's great to be here. So it's Olympic time. So let me start with that. 2004 Athens, India finished seven, but I'm sure that you have very fond memories as well. Probably you would have expected a better result, but... Take me through that moment when you stepped out for your first match, Olympics, the world's ultimate sporting stage. What was it like for you? Uh, I think those are incredible memories for me. Uh, uh, being part of an Olympic sport like hockey, the ultimate uh, uh, aim and goal is, is to, uh, to be able to play at the Olympics. And, uh, you know, uh, going back a few years, I remember uh, at the 1996 Atlanta Olympics, when I was a young teenager watching at home on TV, I remember seeing Leander Pace standing on the Olympic podium at Atlanta 96. And, uh, you know, uh, I remember seeing the Indian flag going up, a tear rolling down Leander's cheeks. And for me, that was my moment of inspiration. I wanted to play for India. I wanted to uh, uh, captain the Indian hockey team. I wanted to play at the Olympics. I wanted to win an Olympic medal. Uh, I was very lucky. The first three dreams got fulfilled. But the final dream of actually winning an Olympic medal myself as a player, that remained unfulfilled. Um, but still, you know, no, no regrets. Athens 2004 was a great experience. Um, I still remember walking out from the dugout into the stadium and so many thousands of people in the stands uh, singing uh, the Jana Gana Mana. Uh, uh, for me, uh, 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 I remember that moment brought tears to my eyes because it was so many years of effort and sacrifice 
to get to the Olympics and uh, in, in a way that was a dream come true uh, uh, as well. So uh, incredible moments, incredible experiences, something I'll never forget. I got a follow up question to ask you, but I'll, I'll, I'll park it for a little later. You were 28 when you decided to quit the sport. And um, alluding to a 2013 article, uh, you later felt that probably it was a mistake. It's a big regret of your life that you didn't have a shot at the Olympics after that. Uh, but 28, it's too young, right? How, I mean, you had captained the country already. You had participated in one uh, Olympics. You played World Cup. You are a winner in the Asian Games. You've done everything that had to be done. How easy was it? Was the decision taken in a short span of time or was it something that you had thought about prior to that? Uh, no, actually, honestly, looking back uh, today, I, I absolutely have no regrets about the decision uh, that I took. Uh, it, it didn't come overnight. It, you know, it was actually a funny situation because uh, I come from a background and a family that had no... Uh, what do I say? No history of performing in uh, in in elite sport. Uh, I came from a very normal, conservative family. Uh, mom was a doctor. Dad was an engineer. My two elder brothers were engineers. So um, you know, it, it was a sports loving family. But I wouldn't really say we were a sports playing family. And uh, you know, I just got hooked on to hockey in school and. Uh, uh, I, I was very lucky because when I was 10, 11 years old, the coach of my school team was a gentleman named Marcellus Gomes, himself an Olympian. He played for India at the 1984 uh, Los Angeles Olympics. And honestly, Marcellus Gomes taught me everything I knew at that young age, not just technical skills of hockey, but he also taught me discipline, commitment, teamwork. And he taught me, most importantly, to believe in myself. So that way you're lucky to have somebody like him, an Olympian like him to, to guide you at that age. Uh, how many people can boast of having an Olympian to be your school coach, right? That happens absolutely, very rarely. And, 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 and that's why I say that I was very lucky. And uh, 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 it, it also just goes to show how much influence a great coach can have in, in, in your life. So it may be a great teacher, a great professor, a great coach. I think we all have that one person who has a profound impact in our lives. For me, it was Marcellus Gomes. And uh, I give maximum credit to him for making me believe that I could go on to play for, uh, for India. And, you know, I was actually a, a fairly good student. I was actually, I can't remember, I think 13th on the SSC Mumbai merit list in 10th wow. standard. Wow. And, um, you know, at that time, we're talking about the 90s, right? Where you had to be a doctor or an engineer. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, and, um, and the software I, engineer I was, thing was still, uh, you know, right. still uh, you know, distant away. Absolutely. And um, uh, I, rem I remember society in general putting a lot of pressure on my parents saying he also should become a doctor or an engineer. But you know, all I wanted to do was play hockey. And, and, and besides, I couldn't understand a single equation at school. So, uh, uh, so it was commerce for me because I felt that would uh, just enable me to give more time to hockey. Okay. But at that time, when I was 15, when the world wanted me to uh, study, I wanted to play. Okay. And at 28, when I finally decided to retire uh, at, a, at a young age, a fairly young age, as you mentioned, the world wanted me to play hockey, but I wanted to study. And I, I, I packed my bags and I decided that I wanted to do my MBA at that point of time. I felt that I'd given everything I could give as a player. And, and for me, the one thing that I've always wanted to do is if I do anything, I should give 100% of commitment and intensity uh, to what I did. And uh, I felt that that was it as a player and I needed to move on uh, to the next phase of my life. So honestly, looking back, uh, no, no regrets. I love what I did then. I love what I do now. So um, I, I'm, I'm, you know, the next best thing to playing hockey is to actually looking after the training of India's best players across sports. So uh, no complaints in life. Uh, absolutely. So uh, you have you have always been very forthcoming, very upfront, very upright, straightforward, and it never mince your words. And I remember you telling, um, you know, um, I forgot the, what the venue was or the forum was. You said you were playing against Australia in a match and you would, have, you would have played about 25 matches in your, in your international career against Australia. And you're playing in that match and you looked around, you could not see even a single blue shirt. Every, every, every 
where it was yellow shirts. And that's when you started thinking probably our practice, the preparation at the highest level is not good enough. So that is an indication of uh, the, the state of affairs in Indian sport and especially Indian hockey because it's close to all our hearts. So did you start feeling that probably this is not the way that we should be doing? Therefore, I should look for something else to, to uh, you know, go forward in my career. So was there a switch which was based on that decision or that, that, that uh, particular uh, scenario in the, in the Indian hockey uh, uh, environment then? No, not really. I wouldn't say that one particular incident. I was just alluding to the fact that historically in Indian sport, and I say across sport, we have never prepared to the quality and levels that we need to be preparing. At. If, right. we are, if, we, if we just want to participate at the Olympics, we can continue to do what we have been doing for the last four decades. About winning Olympic medals, we need to improve in all aspects. And um, yeah, and that incident I was talking about was actually, uh, uh, you know, I, I've played uh, against Australia 20, 25 times in my career and I was a midfielder. So you're on the center of the field, you're on the thick of the action. And every time you get the ball against the Australians and every time you look up, you could really see bl the blue shirts. Only the yellow shirts are visible because Australia don't give you time to think. They don't give you time to breathe. They don't give you time to look up. And, uh, yeah, yeah. and decisions have to be made in split seconds. And right. unless you train for that level of intensity, you right. cannot perform in the match where it really matters, where you will get maybe, if you're lucky, three or four chances to score a goal in a, in, at that time, it used to be a 70 minute match. Now it's become a 60 minute hockey match. Right. So everything happens so quickly and we, we, our training sessions have to be of that quality. And when I asked myself, are we training at that level? The answer was sadly, no. Yes, we were training eight hours a day, but was it the highest quality? Uh, the answer was no. So I think everywhere I've gone, I'm just trying to ensure that the training environment has to be world-class. The environment that we train in has to be conducive to excellence. And that's important to take Indian sport to the next level. So the state of affairs back then in Indian hockey would have uh, become a catalyst in your decision to go on and pursue your management uh, education. And you got an admission in one of the best B schools in the country, the Indian School of Business Hyderabad. And, uh, but were you clear on your path after that? Did you ever get tempted to get into the corporate world or were you kind of sure that you wanted to come back and serve the sport? You know, uh, when I went to ISB, I, uh, I had no clue of what the future held for me. Uh, I went in with a very open mind. I was actually leaning towards not coming back into sport. I wanted to uh, get out of my comfort zone. I, I wanted to do something uh, uh, that I was not used to doing and, and, and try out that because I always felt that if I wanted, I could come back to sport a, 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 any other time. I actually, at the end of the year, I had a conventional corporate job, campus placement. I was about to join my job was in Delhi. And then at the last minute, uh, after the year, my, my year at ISB got over, I had a three month pooling off period. And in that time, I happened to meet uh, two of our sports legends, Geet Sethi and Prakash Padukone. And they had come up with this idea called Olympic Gold Quest, a not-for-profit foundation with a mission to help Indian athletes win Olympic medals. So, you, you know, I, uh, I, I, I felt, first of all, Geet and Prakash were heroes for me. They were gods in the sporting world. And when they ask you to join them, you don't say no to gods. Uh, uh, secondly, I felt that the platform was great to, for me to come back to sport and help the next generation of athletes do something that I couldn't do, which is win, uh, win an Olympic medal. And last but not the least, everyone involved, the board of directors had great credibility. So I think these right. three reasons made me decide to ditch the corporate world and, and, and come back to sport. Right. Um, one question regarding what you said earlier. Um, in the hindsight, was it the right decision to take to quit at 28? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think, okay. uh, you know, till, till today, you ask me, people ask me, Viren, why did you quit at that point of time? People, no, not a single person in the last 12 years has asked me, Viren, why didn't you quit? So, oh, okay. uh, I, 
I'm I'm happy that I quit at my peak. I happy I'm happy right. that people still remember me. It makes me right. feel proud. It it, right. it makes me feel that I I I did something at a, as a player for the country. I was valued. And uh, you know, yeah, the question you're 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 asking me is not wherein why do you, shouldn't you have quit at that point of time? Right. And what right. we ask most people. But so I, right. I I I I have no regrets. And like I said, I quit when I was at my peak. And 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 I'm I'm fine and fairly relaxed with that decision. As a part of staying positive, I make it a point not to talk about it. But the current scenario, you have to talk about it. Just the COVID nineteen thing. If you look at a young athlete uh, getting ready, gearing up for the Tokyo Olympics, there are two ways in which you can look at it. One is, oh, I prepared so hard and I'm about to perform, and it's been it's been postponed by a year. But there could also be a thought that I'm getting those extra months. In fact, about one year. to prepare better so where do you think the indian athletes stand in terms of preparation this postponement how much do you think they have it has helped them or do you think it has gone against them realistically uh, you know very tough question to answer the uh, um, uh, the answer is a bit of both there are pros and there are cons as well i think um, the downside was that Uh, if you remember the first wave of the pandemic uh, last year in uh, 2020 when it hit us in march april may we were only 4 months away from the uh, tokyo olympics uh, in yes. 2020 yes and at that time when almost in the span of a week the whole world shut down and then the olympics were postponed we saw a massive drop in motivation and focus levels of athletes Right. Uh, you know athletes train really well when there's a fixed goal in front of them right that right. goal may be in terms of say the olympics which has start going to start on 23rd july 2020 when that goal got taken away uh, they were in a vacuum they didn't know what to do so, uh, all that an athlete knows is to wake up at 5:30 in the morning and start training at 6:30 in the morning so uh, uh, so that was tough for them to get the motivation back to get the focus back because again at that time suddenly the world came to a standstill there were no international tournaments for 8 8 months and how does an athlete motivate uh, himself or herself to train if right. there is no fixed goal in front of him you know vishwanathan anand who has been a eight time world champion uh, across formats was telling me that when i am finding it hard to motivate myself to train because there's no tournament how do i uh, push the inset right. intensity in right. training so i think that right. was a very tough phase um i would say on the positive side two things have really happened one right. is the pandemic accelerated online learning for athlete they have become more uh, familiar with using online tools for using zoom sessions uh, 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 like we are doing right now uh um, for learning remotely coaches they understand now that coaches or trainers cannot be with them physically 24/7 this is the new normal and right. secondly i've seen that now athletes are taking more responsibility for their own training program you know formally right. only danda policy used to work for indian athletes right, right. the coach is there with uh, uh, you and me in school when the teachers looking we we would study and the teachers not there we would not and maybe the cedric cedric this is a style Uh, uh, absolutely absolutely <laughs> so uh, so uh, so i i think so these are good things to come out of it the acceleration of online learning and also uh, the element of responsibility that i'm seeing come up in indian athletes right we'll get back to indian hockey but before that uh, the compulsive quiz in me is out i'm going to put you on the spot with three questions rapid fire each question has a max of 5 seconds so we need to be done with it in 15 seconds and it's all about you and olympics shall we start with it ready go ahead here we go now india's first win in 2004 athens olympics was against south africa uh the margin was 2-4 india scored four goals can you recollect all four goal scorers uh Gagan Ajit, Deepak Thakur, uh, and Dandraj Pillai. I'll give you maybe seventy-five marks out of hundred for that because it's it's Dandraj Pillai, Baljit Singh, Dilip Turki, Baljit Dilon, Dilip Turki. Uh, okay, and Gagan Ajit Singh. Okay, okay. Not okay. not bad, not bad. I mean, not bad. And second question: Every match 
of that particular um, tournament, the edition was played in one complex, hockey complex. What was the name of the hockey complex in Athens? Do you remember that? No, I, I just remembered it as the Athens Hockey Stadium, Olympic Park. It is Heli Nikon. Any, any Greece listening to me, uh, you know, pardon me for the pronunciation if it's not right, it's Heli Nikon. And right, uh, right. Gagan Ajit Singh was easily the top scorer for India in that tournament. Tell me how many goals did he score? Six. The answer is six plus one, seven. That's okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> that's okay. I mean, it's, it's a decent performance. So let's get back. Now, um, I was interacting with uh, Mr. Baskaran um, a little while ago, and he, he told me about the heartbreak that he experienced as a coach because he was a, he was a captain when India won the last goal. And then 20 years later, he was a coach where India was just a few seconds away from making it to a semifinal and in with a real chance of a podium finish when... Poland uh, had an equalizer. So there are, there are near misses. But again, we can't make excuses out of it because the fact is that 40 years, Indian hockey, we haven't had a, a podium finish. And this is for an eight-time Olympic champion. Do you think things have changed now because we are pinning hopes on the hockey team now going to Tokyo? Realistically, how good are our chances? Uh, yeah, things have definitely changed. I think uh, Hockey India has done a good job over the last decade. Uh, you know, the the real Nadir was in 2008, uh, the Beijing Olympics, when the Indian hockey team did not qualify for the first qualify. time ever. In 2012, at the London Olympics, we did qualify, but we finished last uh, no. out of the 12 teams. Um, that time, our ranking was 11th, 12th in the world. If you... If you look at the period after 2012, the Indian hockey team has gradually improved in terms of our ranking. So from 12 to 11 to 10 to 9 to 8, and now we're finally in the top four in the world. And although I don't give much weightage to ranking, I give more weightage to performance. But I think this ranking has come about on the back of consistent performances, especially over the last two years. In the last Olympic cycle, we have beaten all the top teams in the world, which has sort of never happened before. So I genuinely believe that this hockey team has the wherewithal to, to challenge for an Olympic medal in Tokyo. And uh, yeah, uh, is it possible? Yes, 100% it's possible. Is it going to be tough? Of course, it's going to be a tough. Uh, we, we've got a tough pool, so we should not even take a quarterfinal place for granted because every match is going to be super hard. And when we reach the quarterfinal, I, I potentially see our opponents as either Holland, Germany, Belgium, or England. These are the four teams that also came to the fi- uh, semifinals of the European Championship just two weeks ago. I watched all those matches and those matches were at, a extre- uh, at an extremely high level. So it's not going to be an easy quarterfinal match as well. We need to win that to come to the semis uh, of uh, uh, Tokyo. So there are many steps along the way. And we should not get ahead of ourselves and be talking of medals. We should right. take it uh, really one match at a time and prepare well for every match. Right. So people say it's a good mix of uh, experience and youth with six experienced players and 10 who are, who are youngsters. Um, how do you see the team? Especially we only have, obviously, Srijesh has been a safe custodian and is by far the best. But only one goalkeeper? What's your take on that? Um if you look at the last three or four Olympics, no team in the world goes into the Olympics with a two, with a uh, with with two goalkeepers. I think okay. this is the way modern hockey is played uh, with a sixteen-member right. squad. You only right. go with one goalkeeper and fifteen outfield players because the you go by probabilities. You take uh, decisions right. based on probabilities. The the probability of a goalkeeper a goalkeeper getting injured is minute. How many times does that happen? And, right. and, and these are risks that you will take. And uh, I think as per the new rules, if the goalkeeper gets injured, you can get a replacement as well from outside right. the 16. So right. it, it right. makes sense to go with 16. It is a good balance of youth and experience. Manpreet is an excellent captain. He leads by example. He leads with energy, with effort, uh, with encouragement. His man management skills are good. He's, he's been a fantastic Servant to Indian hockey over almost a decade now, playing his third Olympics. So he's got so much experience. He's been a former FIH World Player of the Year. So the right person to lead the team, Srijesh uh, in the back line. I think our, our defense uh, uh, 
uh, with players like Rupin Dapal, Birendra Lakhra, uh, the midfield as well uh, uh, is is very strong. I'm I'm little bit concerned about the forward line. Uh, okay. Uh, and maybe we are slightly lacking firepower there, right. but uh, uh, you know we have to trust the judgment of the coach. Because of the pandemic, we have not been able to watch uh, too many international tournaments. They have not got right. much opportunities to play. So I can't really say, uh, but right. I'm sure the coach and the selectors know what they're doing and they have selected the best 16. Right. So generally, by and large, you're happy with the selection? Um, uh, uh, you know, like with everyone else, uh, SV Sunil and Akash Deep Singh in the forward line would be you know, people like me uh, watching from the outside would think that they should deserve a place in the team. But like I said, the coach knows better. I think right. we also have to understand that the Olympics with a 16-member squad, you need players who are super fit, who can take right. the load of playing seven matches in 10, 11 days. So uh, we have to trust the judgment of the coach. Right. Then one final thing. Um, a change is the only thing that doesn't change. And obviously, with your, with your um, experience in management as a CEO, you would, you would know that better than anybody else. So what more can we expect and what different can we expect from uh, uh, the Olympic gold quest in the future? What are your future plans if, if, uh, if you're in a position to reveal some of them? Um, I think we are, uh, at this point of time, we are researching a lot on, on going deeper into Paralympic sport. And, uh, okay. uh, you know, uh, historically, para, uh, uh, para athletes have not got as much support as able-bodied athletes. And uh, we want to ensure that the, uh, the Paralympic medal is treated on par with the Olympic medal that's happening. There's a global movement of inclusivity, really Wonderful. talented uh, athletes on that front. So uh, I think support giving more and deeper support to para athletes and going deeper in supporting junior athletes. So athletes who are right from the age of 11, 12, 13 years old, so identifying them early, ensuring that they are in the right systems, right processes from an early age. Because we firmly believe that if you put the right processes, if you create a, a world-class environment, that will right. produce results over a six to eight year period. Right. And what message would you like to give the Indian contingent through the week? Um, I think, uh, you know, it takes courage to succeed and it's, it's easier to quit and easier to give up. So, uh, uh, the entire, uh, nation is supporting, uh, our Indian contingent participating at Tokyo. Uh, and I would love for them to have the courage to succeed, to, to, to raise the bar and to push the limits and to inspire a million young kids, uh, 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 uh to go on to do what, uh, what they are doing the country uh viren um it's, it's indeed a pleasure listening to you anytime any day and uh thank you so much for joining me and i'm sure that uh the country will support you in your quest to have more medals coming the olympic medals into the country and uh, you none better than you to 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 pilot that uh, uh great cause so wishing you all the very best uh, on behalf of the week and on my personal behalf as well and thank you so much for talking to me Thank you very much. It's been a, a, a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Vinod. Thank you. Well, just as great. We are talking about near misses. What could have been? To see hockey there would be a little ironic because we have had 11 medals before that, eight gold medals two bronze medals and a silver medal as well. And the, the, the reason that I'm including this here is what I still remember, what still haunts me is a memory from the 2000 Sydney Olympics. India had done reasonably well and they were in with a great chance of making it to the semi-finals. All they needed to do was to hold on to their one goal lead going into the final couple of minutes against a team which is not well known for its hockey skills. Poland. Well, as luck would have it, the coach of Indian team was Vasudevan Bhaskaran. Incidentally, he was the captain of the Indian team which won the last Olympic gold in Moscow in 1980. 1 minute 46 seconds for the Hooter. 1 minute 46 seconds to go on the clock and there was some goof up in the Indian midfield. The Polish reached the Indian defence. And then, the words of Jude Menaces after that. 
the Indian goalkeeper said, that thought still rings in my ears and it still disturbs me. India conceded a goal and the time that was left was not adequate for them to score. Whom to be blamed? We don't know, but that doesn't matter. And I still remember the words of uh, Coach Bhaskaran. He said, I went out to have a few beers to drown my sorrows. 2000 Sydney Olympics, that is 20 years after India's last uh, victory. If India had qualified the semi-final, we were in with a real chance of winning a medal. That would have probably been a different script for Indian hockey. And we, we, we needn't have waited this long for yet another medal. So that qualifies as just as great moment because of the sheer gravity of that moment. Had India won a medal, probably it could have been followed up with a few more in the subsequent editions. But the fact is that we are still waiting for 40 years. So that, a heartbreaking moment, which still haunts quite a few Indian fans.